So I'm going to go ahead and get us live on YouTube right now. Hey. Do you have any letters or text or whatever? Okay. Thank you. So I don't know how long we want to wait if we want to. Oh, wait, there's Garrett. Hang on just a second. So where was this at? At this place? At this block? Avenue? Oh. All right, Nick, I'll leave it up to you. Whenever you guys are ready, we're already on our end. Sounds great. Uh, welcome to the City of Port Aransas Regular Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, Tuesday, March the 2nd, 2021. Call to order. Uh, item two, public hearing. The Port Aransas Planning and Zoning Commission will conduct a public hearing on the following <clears throat> item 2.1. Please limit comments to three minutes or less. We'll only do this once and we'll reference it uh, when we go to items for consideration is FPLT 210284, Platt of Cinnamon Shores. FPLT 210284, Platt of Cinnamon Shores South, Unit 4A, part of Cinnamon Shore 2, PUD, 36.04 acres, being a replat of Lot 19, Mustang Island, a map of which is recorded in Volume 38, pages 130 through 131, map records of Nueces County, Texas lots 21, 23, 24, and 28, block four, Cinnamon Shores South, unit one, part of Cinnamon Shores two, PUD, a map of which is recorded in volume 69. Plan of Cinnamon Shores South, unit four. All right. Am I okay? Yeah, so I, um, I'm gonna interrupt you for just a second. I just added somebody into the meeting that called in. Um, I don't know who it is. I've muted them for right now. I just want to let them know that we're in the public hearing portion of the meeting and that you're going to continue reading that. Okay, and I'll complete it. Then you can find out if they want to be a part of the public hearing. How about that? Sure. Uh, and I'm sure I know where I was. A map of which is recorded in volume 69, page 144 through 138. Map records of Nueces County, Texas, and lots 1A and 1B. Lot 3, Cinnamon Shore South, Unit 2, part of Cinnamon Shore 2, Pud, a map of which is recorded in volume blank, pages blank through blank. Map records of Nueces County, Texas, applicant Mustang Island Development, Inc. Property location 5800 Highway 361. And uh, I would I'll yield to you on if there's somebody that's wanting to talk during this public hearing or if they're going to wait till citizen comments. Okay, so the phone number that I added, the 512 phone number. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. This is Brian Crow. I'm just listening in. Actually, I'm watching now on YouTube. Um, sure. So okay, YouTube. so um, so Brian, I'm going to go ahead and mute you for right now. If you need to speak up whenever your agenda item comes up, um, I'll get you to to join in then, okay? Okay, great, thanks so much. All right, no problem. Um, Nick, so that is a applicant for one of the June permits that we have uh, a little bit later on. We have no uh, written or emailed items for the public hearing. We have no written, no emailed items and nobody else on the phone. We're gonna close the public hearing and we're gonna go to item three, citizens comments and reports. 
At this time, comments will be taken from the audience on any subject matter. Please limit comments to three minutes. In accordance with the Open Meetings Act, the Planning and Zoning Commission cannot discuss or take action on any item that has not been posted on the agenda. I, I call the Nope, we have no phone, no emailed comments. Nobody has indicated that they want to speak and nobody's on the line. We're going to close the citizen comments and reports and we're going to go to item four. Uh, discuss take action on any of the following. 4.1, introduce and welcome newly appointed planning and zoning commissioners. I think what I'll do is uh, existing commissioners. My name is Nick Loretta. I think I know everybody, but Michael, I don't believe I've had the privilege of meeting you. I don't think. Uh, no, sir. Good to meet you. Uh, uh, Chad, raise your hand. Current, current commissioner and Garrett. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we could do this two ways. Uh, I could make y'all get up and stand up and. Tell you, tell you about your personal history. I don't, does anybody care to do that? <laughs> uh, I'd like for you to wave when I call out your name. Craig Scott? Right here. Thank you. Ashley Robertson? Michael Dan? Right here. And Kyle Burgess? Right here. Perfect. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to 4.2. Discuss and take action to appoint a chairman for the remainder of the 2021 term. Just in case you don't know, I think I've been chair for four or six years. Uh, Robert Tips has moved on. Uh, he was chair, so I was co-chair. And I'm inviting uh, a motion for chair other than me. Anybody have a motion? Chair. I'd motion Chad if he's interested. And who said that? I, I did. Ahead. I said I'd motion for Chad Shemitis. I'll second that. Perfect. Nicole? All right. So we've got a motion from Kyle and a second from Mike Dayon. Um, so let's start with Chad. Chad Shemitis. Yes, I have to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Garrett Kipke? Yes. So it's not you, right? Uh, Craig Scott? Yes. And Ashley Robertson? Yes. Kyle Burgess? Yes. Mike Dayon? Yes. And Nick Lorette? Yes. All right, motion carries. Congratulations, Chad. Great. <laughs> it does come with a uh, an extra double pay stipend as well, just so you know. There you go. Well, when you double zero, I think we're, we're right back to where we started. So, Oh, I, I guess that's right. <laughs> being, being the perfect protocol in that I am, I don't have the answer to this, but I'm no longer chairman. So I suggest you take over at 4.3. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> item 4.3, discuss and take action to appoint a co-chairman for the remainder of the 2021 term. We have a motion for a co-chairman. Well, I'll motion for Nick Lorette to continue in my supporting role and substitute. I'll second that motion. <laughs> you guys <are> <laughs> All right, so we've got a motion from Craig and a second from Chad. We will start with Kyle Burgess. Yes. Uh, Mike Dayon? Yes. Garrett Kipke? Yes. Craig Scott? Yes. Ashley Robertson? Yes. Chad Chimaitis? Yes. Nick Lorette? Yes. Motion carries. Congratulations, you two. <laughs> this is like Hotel California for Nick. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we move on to the next item, Kyle, Mike, Craig, you've been here before. Um, Ashley, if, yeah. if anybody has any questions now or at any time, you know, I've, I've only been here eight or nine months at this point, but if anybody has any questions, don't, don't hesitate to ask. I mean, there's 
you know, a lot of times it's just really cookie cutter type stuff, but there are big items that come up every now and then we, that are not quite as simple. So don't, don't hesitate if you need, if you need to know something, obviously adhering to all our open meetings act rules and all those items. So don't. Absolutely. Don't Chad. And, and also let me just add that, that I know this came up, this came upon everybody pretty quickly because of the postponement last week. Um, but the meeting, there may be some things that you choose just not to, not to ask, which is fine. Feel free to come by anytime. Some of the things we touch on may, may, may lead to more questions. Uh, so like I said, uh, just anything in general, we understand. The good news is for those that, that haven't already heard is that the governor pretty much effectively next Wednesday, for, for lack of a better way to put it, opened Texas back up to business as usual. So th that will change the, uh, the restrictions on meetings and so on and so forth. And this will be so much easier uh, once we get back to meeting in person. Um, so uh, like I said, that uh, I think that'll change the dynamic quite a bit. So uh, uh, you know, that, that looks like the environment is changing a little bit, but, but feel free. Uh, and those that have been a while know this, but those that are new, you know, we don't work by appointments. Our doors are almost always open. So like I said, feel free to come by anytime. We can elaborate on some of these things. But I wanna, I'm, I'm gonna touch on a couple of kind of general explanations. It may be redundant for a few of you, but just kind of overviews on some of the processes because it's opportune. But for the most part, uh, we'll leave in-depth discussion, I think, till next time, because it looks like we're gonna be back together. So. Anyway, with that, I just want to kind of offer that up. Correct. Item 4.4, discuss and take action on final plat 210284 Cinnamon Shore South Unit 4A, part of Cinnamon Shore 2 PUD. Um, I, I, as Nick said, I don't know if we need to reread the entire uh, filing here. Um, no, you don't. Nicole, is, you guys have anything to add on I, this? Just yeah, just like I said, as long as we as long as we read the the full description once, whether it's a public at the public hearing side or, or anything else, then then we, we we've entered into the record, so we're good. Um, so here's a good here's a good one to start with because I think that the members, uh, those that have been here have seen these types of things before, and those uh, that are new will start to see quite a few of these replats, uh, especially from our planned unit developments down south, being Palmia. Cinnamon Shore North, uh, more so Cinnamon Shore South is a newer uh, part of the 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 sub the, uh, the development uh, in Sunflower Beach to, a, to a, maybe a little bit smaller extent. Um, and I say that you'll see more of these because once the master planned unit development was approved, uh, from there it kind of becomes a phased development. So all of these properties, as they get ready to actually start uh, selling off the lots, then get into this phased replat and they actually take what was already approved in a master plan and they and they plat it accordingly so that they can uh, uh, effectively finish that part of the infrastructure uh, and then make them available to sell. A planned unit development, again, I think I've talked to a few of you, just remember is its own zoning ordinance. And so when they, when they the, uh, the original planned unit development at PNZ and ultimately through council, they're afforded a lot of flexibility with setbacks, height, parking, the mixed use component that you find in most all the planned unit developments. They are their own ordinance, so they supersede uh, any other of our development codes by, again, being their own ordinance. Uh, so, like I said, uh, when you see something that's a little higher or set back differently or you know, has a different cap uh, characteristic. That's why they also have their own development code that uh, allows a little bit different interpretation of our cantilever rules and what can extend and penetrate into a setback. So all of those things you find in a planned unit development. But back to the plat, uh, what also will happen occasionally is because of that flexibility that's afforded a planned unit development, you also sometimes see slight modifications. They'll take a lot that was originally designed to be divided up into residential lots, perhaps make that into a condo project lot or vice versa. Uh, take a lot that was designed for, for uh, single family estates size homes, uh, reconfigured based on market demand uh, 
to, to, to more of a cottage unit. All of those are typically not a major change to what uh, planning and zoning originally council later approved. So usually those aren't, aren't of, of any issue. Something that would change a transect to allow for a completely higher level of a construction of light, uh, greater height, uh, something that might have an impact on property owners uh, might be a little bit different. But we'll cross those bridges as they come up. But, but I just kind of wanted to give you that overview of, of, of the planning process, especially as it pertains to these planned unit developments. You'll see quite a few of these. Uh, again, probably more so with Cinnamon Shore development. They just have more real estate right now, um, like I said, than some of the others. But if, if they, you know, kind of uh, modify their marketing plans based on market conditions and demands, like I said, there'll be slight tweaks to what was approved. So um, I don't know, Nicole, if but the planning process in general, I think since the, the governor just kind of acted today, I think we'll, maybe we'll hold off on, on platting in general, uh, maybe till next meeting where we can actually uh, have a face-to-face -face discussion. And as I think I've told all of you, we'll continue to look for uh, some educational webinars that'll also be good primers uh, from some pretty good legal folks. I think Chad's been through one, uh, maybe a few of you others, uh, Garrett, uh, uh, Garrett, as far as the, uh, uh, you know, some really good presentations by people that are used to teaching this stuff. So we'll search those out as well, I think, which will be a good resource. So uh, with that said, anything else, Nicole, from a planning standpoint that, that again, generally that, that uh, we should mention before we talk about this one specifically? Uh, no, I, I think you've covered it pretty well. Okay. Uh, and so with all of that preface, like I said, this one simply takes these lots and they, you know, bring it into a now um, a, a, a platable part that they can develop and ultimately sell. And I think that the documents probably lay out a pretty good idea. They show you the existing lot configuration, which are the, usually the larger blocks, and then the replat that, that again breaks that down into what they're actually going to develop. So um, I, I think really I'll shut up and you know, just see if there's any specific questions we include the utility responses, which means we reach out with any any uh, type of actually any type of planning action to the utilities just to ensure that uh, they are in agreement. Uh, water sewer from Nueces County Water Control, CenturyLink, um, AEP, of course our gas department, and so all the responses you'll see there uh, are uh, in the affirmative. We also in a planning action like this. Uh, again, because of some of the technical level uh, of information that's presented, we send it to our reviewing engineer. And again, just for clarity's sake, our city engineer is, is urban engineering, but because they do so much project work uh, for private property owners, uh, that responsibility for reviewing falls to Hanson, who's our kind of our backup engineer. So you'll see those go back and forth in those different reviewing roles. Uh, and I think in this case, what Nicole has up is the uh, is the the review. Uh, very seldom will we bring it to planning and zoning unless unless we've reconciled uh, the the issues. Maybe only if it's a very minor issue would we bring it to planning and zoning, and we we'd be very clear on what it was. But in this case, as you'll see, um, obviously it says uh, that that needs to be recorded. Uh, you know prior to becoming official, the final plan, and then of course, uh, uh, the number two on the Hanson review, which it says it does adhere to our city of Port Aransas uh, platting requirements and our codes and ordinances. So that's also a big part of the, uh, uh, a big part of this is uh, that review process. Yeah, uh, so the two- it does, uh, it does meet all of our uh, platting requirements, uh, again, as confirmed by also our reviewing engineer, so staff recommends We'll throw that out there. The two items that were missing from the packet when I sent it out were um, our gas utility review. We very rarely get a review response back from AEP, but he does receive it from me. I do get notice that he receives the emails from me. Um, so this is the gas response in the affirmative, and then obviously the review from our city engineer.
Any comments, questions? <laughs> uh, no, I have none. I just wanted to always, in one minute or less, uh, a PUD seems kind of crazy if you've never been involved with a PUD or exposed to a PUD, but if you start thinking about the PUDs that Rick just talked about, these are typically 10, 20, 30, 40 year projects. Uh, it's, it's, it's a give and a take. And the reason the city will accept a PUD is no one has a crystal ball and knows what's gonna happen 10 or 15 years out. That is basically the premise for where a PUD was created years and years ago because things change, markets change, and they have their own little bubble, just like Rick explained, but it's, it's, not, it's not some kind of magic. That's the purpose of a PUD is that it, it evolves, it morphs, and that's what we're doing right now on this proposed uh, adjustment to help out anybody that hadn't played with PUDs before. Thank you, Nick. Very good. And we do have um, the submitting engineer on the phone if you guys have any questions. All right. Do we have a motion? If not, I'll, I'll take it. I'll file the motion in favor of a uh, plat. Uh, final plat 210284, Cinnamon Shore South, Unit 4A, part of Cinnamon Shore 2, PUD. I'll second. Thank you. So we've got a motion from Chad Schmidus and a second from Garrett Kipke. We'll start with Craig Scott. Yes. Okay. Nick Lorette. Yes. Garrett Kipke. Yes. Mike Dayon. Yes. Kyle Burgess. Abstain. Ashley Robertson. Yes. And Chad Schmidus. Yes. Motion carries. And, and as we get to plats that have, uh, like I said, different uh, nuances, uh, next plat may not have anything to do with the planned unit development. We'll elaborate a little bit on that if we haven't had a chance to talk more in depth before that. Uh, like I said, uh, I think once we get back together face to face, it'll be a little bit easier as well. We can, uh, you know, we can have some visuals on the screen. And anyway, just uh, it's a lot more conducive. And if we need to, uh, if there aren't any good educational presentations uh, prior uh, uh, in the near future, then what we'll do is we'll we'll organize one. And, and now that it looks like meetings are going to be open back up. We can bring one in and actually do a workshop. Uh, we'll kind of take our lead as we get to know the new commissioners. Uh, as to what you guys really would like to see and what what you need. We just don't have a handle other than just the resumes from knowing really what your level of expertise. We don't want to insult anybody that knows some of this stuff. So we'll we'll talk more and we'll provide you whatever we can to help make you a success. Item 4.5, discuss and take action to confirm that no dune permit BFDP 21-0263 is consistent with the coastal management plan. Applicants seek to establish that no critical dunes exist on the property. Applicant, Gianna and Brian Crow, property lo location 283 Royal Dunes. Uh, one thing I'd like to ask here is for everybody, is everybody new to the board understand when a no dune permit versus a dune permit gets brought into brought into play? And if, if not, I would like Rick to spend a minute, 60 seconds explaining no dune permit versus a dune permit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 60 seconds. That's tough for Rick. All right. So, so <laughs> obviously we have a, a tremendous amount of, of property that, that falls within a thousand feet of mean high tide. So for mean high tide, a thousand foot in, inland, see where our landward, there will be some kind of, of dune protection determination that's needed. Um, and, and usually that falls into two categories. One, where there's a no dune determination, which means based on our, our own coastal management plan, no critical dunes exist. None of the construction will have any impact of vegetation, critical dunes whatsoever. But the fact that it's within that thousand foot does require a determination 
that is made by planning and zoning and ultimately ratified by council, that that is in fact the condition. Uh, the, the alternative would be a, a permit where there will be some impact, no matter how slight uh, or how minor, uh, it could be a gopher mound that has vegetated. Uh, in the GLO's eyes, that is now a dune and must be, must be dealt with. Uh, that is a much more complex type permitting uh, that, that virtually in all instances will require an engineer to determine certain volumes of, of mitigation. Uh, where any impacted dunes, where that material in like amount can be transferred to be just beneficial to the dune system. So those are the two types. Um, and, and like I said, we'll, we'll elaborate as we get into them a little bit more, but this is one where uh, the exhibits, uh, we hope show uh, fairly substantially that there are no critical dunes being impacted. It does fall within the, the thousand foot. Uh, this is one such permit where it actually is in a subdivision uh, the Mustang Royal, uh, Mustang Royal neighborhood unit development. Uh, it was a lot that's been previously flattened. Uh, there very likely was a dune permit for the subdivision. That's, that's not uncommon when somebody develops uh, a beach walk, a Mustang Ro Royale, uh, a Banyan Beach, some of those. Uh, it's not unusual for them to uh, Cinnamon Shores, the planned unit developments. They'll do a big master dune permit uh, initially. And uh, again, level the lots and it just makes them more marketable. So regardless of, of how they got to a flattened, uh, no impacted uh, lot, that's what we have here. Uh, so there are no critical dunes. Uh, there will be no impact. Uh, when we get to our comprehensive plan rewrite, which we've talked about for years, um, but it looks like we've got uh, uh, hopefully we've got somebody that, that's going to come in uh, and, and actually that's going to be their primary focus is to kick that off. The coastal management plan will be part of that rewrite and we will take this process out of it. Uh, this, is, this is a self-imposed self additional process where we have to go through this whole thing and it has to go uh, to planning and zoning and council. When there's no impact to critical dunes, there should be nothing that needs to be done. Um, like I said, so this is self-imposed by our own coastal management plan. Uh, so it, like I said, at, at some point in the future when there's no critical dunes, this, this, you won't be seeing these any longer. But for now, you will. Uh, and that's what we have here. This, is, this uh, doesn't, uh, uh, these don't necessarily go uh, for review. Like I said, it's just, uh, uh, but they do go to planning and zoning and council. So that's what you have here, the documents. Uh, uh, in this case, I think are pretty significant. The photos speak a thousand words. Uh, there are no critical dunes being impacted. One other thing about no dune permits, once a no dune permit, once uh, this is approved by planning and zoning and council, it, it lasts in perpetuity. The only condition, uh, the only qualifier to that is that uh, staff can and must go out and ensure that no critical dunes have reestablished. So, like I said, once should this be approved, that uh, forever and in perpetuity, that lot will be designated as a no dune permit required lot. And, uh, and like I said, other than just ensuring that it stays maintained, uh, they'll never have to do anything again to it. So, um, again, if Nicole doesn't have anything else to add to that, uh, like I said, this certainly falls within that category. Staff recommends approval. Yeah, so typically we wait until after PNZ's recommendation before we send it to GLO for review, but because we are able to skip the uh, reviewing engineer step in a no doom permit, I actually send these typically to GLO um, prior to PNZ. And given the delay, we were able to get GLO's approval letter, which you see in the packet, um, ahead of this meeting. All that matters. Yeah, and, and, and good point, Nicole. Yeah, I, I don't want I don't want to, uh, to to leave out our our uh, you know the authority over the dune system as a whole and, and, and charged with, with uh, monitoring the Natural Resource Act, which is the GLO. Through our coastal, coastal management plan, they have delegated us certain authority to deal with these matters. However, uh, part of our coastal management plan says that they are still notified, uh, still allowed to comment, and those comments are presented uh, you know, uh, to, to, to council in conjunction with whatever your recommendation is. So. Like I said, the GLO still has uh, ultimate 
authority over the, the, the dunes, but through our coastal management plan has, has delegated a lot of that uh, to us, hence what, what you're acting on today. All right. Um, does anybody from Urban, I don't know, Harris, does anybody have anything else they want to add or? I think that Urban is, in, I don't see them on the call anymore. Okay. Mr. Crow's still around. We'd like to thank him, even if he, uh, for being here. The applicant. So he is, yep, there he is. Hang on. We don't have any questions, but just say thank you or something, I guess. I'm sorry, Chad, this is your job now. <laughs> <laughs> Old habits die hard, honey. <laughs> Brian, thank you for uh, showing up or getting on the Zoom call and listening through all this minutia to get to get your uh, no dune permit. With, with sure, all that we're excited. We're excited yeah. to be part of the community and thank you so much for your consideration of our application. Thank you. With that, does any would anybody like to start a motion here, please? I'll 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 make a motion to approve and confirm the no do no June permit uh, VF DP twenty one dash O two six three is consistent with the coastal management plan. I'll second. Um, I missed the second. I'm sorry. That's Mike. Okay, so we've got a motion from Craig and a second from Mike. So let's start with Kyle Burgess this time. Yes. Okay, Ashley Robertson. Yes. Craig Scott. Yes. Garrett Kipke. Yes. Nick Lorette. Yes. Mike Dayon. Yes. And Chad Schmidas. I'm staying. Okay. Motion carries. All right, item 4.6, discuss and take action to confirm that dune permit BFDP 21-0344 is consistent with the coastal management plan. Applicants propose to construct a swimming pool and pool improvements at the rear of the residence. Applicants Dennis and Jennifer Winshuffle, property location 5601 Highway 361, Unit 110. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So uh, as, as we previously uh, talked about, so this is the, uh, the alternative type of dune permit where there will be an impact, albeit relatively small, uh, to the dunes and ultimately the vegetation, um, thus requiring what you have before, before you now. These type of permits where there will be some impact, uh, it, it's just our, our policy and procedure to send it to an, an, a, a reviewing engineer. Uh, like I said, in, in almost all instances, although it's not a requirement, but the level of data that's required uh, for a permit of this nature uh, usually uh, require somebody experienced in that, and that's an engineer. Um, and then uh, again, subsequently, it goes to, as I explained, one of the uh, one of the other engineers uh, to to review. And and again, it, it's very rare that we bring you anything that hasn't been reconciled between the two professional uh, engineers that develop the. the the applicant or that uh, develop and then review the application. And like I said, and sometimes the timing between these meetings is such that uh, we may get these relatively late. We apologize for that and we'll always, uh, with the, with the, at the chairman's discretion, hold up a meeting to, for you to get certain comfort levels with, with anything that comes in late. So don't ever hesitate to, uh, like I said, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, to just hold the meeting up to make sure everybody has a chance. It, it's just the reality. We've tried, uh, you know, we've tried, but sometimes they just come in late. So uh, again, uh, this particular application is simply for a pool uh, and, and pool amenities uh, that will extend to the rear and will impact the, will impact the dunes as the exhibits show. Uh, I think the impact, uh, I had this earlier, was uh, uh, fairly minimal. <clears throat> But the diagrams do a really good job of showing uh, what I explained as that compensation. So they show um, the uh, affected critical dune area, which is, uh, again, if you look at, uh, I'm looking at attachment number two, I guess, is, is the one I, I tend to, to gravitate toward. Page 49 on the PDF. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. So that's, uh, again, the legend is pretty good. The affected critical dune area, it's about 8.4 cubic yards. 
uh, and they show the mitigation side or the comp or where that compensation is going. Uh, and again, that's uh, that's done with a certain level of science where they look at the topography, the contours, uh, and in not only the developing engineer's opinion, but then also the reviewing engineer that is able to comment, uh, you know, does make a determination that, that in fact that is as beneficial to the dune system overall um, as where the material was in the first place. Uh, one other thing I'll touch on, and like I said, we'll, we'll talk a lot about dune permits in the future. Um, but one other thing that we'll talk about in the scheme of things is, is a, a concept that I, I, I say is somewhat abstract to a degree, and that's the, the concept and requirement of minimization. And like I said, we'll talk more in depth about this, but I just wanna to touch on it for, for you guys to think about. Uh, in the coastal management plan, any development, uh, be it uh, just a swimming pool amenity, a house uh, or anything larger, also ha has to fall under the, the uh, the litmus test of minimization is it the least that you can do the least impact to the dunes to still get uh, what you would would want because um, uh, a lot of times the the I wants really exceed the I need or, or or that minimization concept like I said somewhat abstract and I'll be the first to say that that, that it's hard to quantify that that concept sometimes uh, but the GLO, it is written into the plan. It is a requirement that, that it be addressed. Uh, like I said, not so much of an impact here, but I, like I said, it is, a, it is a big deal. And you'll see it when it comes to walkovers and larger, uh, larger scale development. So uh, I, I, won't, I won't beat it up. But, but again, this is a smaller scale operation. Like I said, minimal uh, impact. Um, again, for, for a specific pool and amenity structure for an existing house that's already existing, the photos do a good job of kind of laying out what, you know, where those dunes are the, uh, and what's going to be mitigated for. So with that, uh, again, I think reviewing engineers uh, letters in there, all the issues were reconciled. Reviewing engineers uh, do conclude that it's consistent with the uh, our management plan, staff agrees and we recommend approval. So we also have the applicant engineer on the call here with us, Orlando Ortiz. Um, some things that weren't involved in your packet was that um, comment response letter from him, the revised June permit, and then ultimately the approval from the reviewing engineer. Okay, so Nicole, there's a second, there's a second letter in here from Urban after they sent their initial comments back, the four items. So there's a second letter that's not in this packet, but where everything got um, And so I apologize, whenever I open it up, I, I'm seeing all of the new things attached. So... <laughs> I can if drop this page 42 of uh, if you guys you guys might not be seeing this letter that urban. I received from urban okay yes so that one is about nine days after the one I've got the one from February 23rd that had some sure. questions and then it sounds like it it was revised after that okay we don't so have it was, so um and because of this new software that we're using with the packets, whenever I upload it, I think that it automatically um, regenerates on the website. So if you downloaded it originally when I sent it, you're going to have the old packet. If you're going straight off of the link right now online, you will see the most current packet. And you would see the letter from Orlando, his revised June permit, and then Urban's. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Orlando, have any comments? Any, any PNZ commissioners have any comments or questions? Looks good to me. All right, with that, I'll take motion to pass Dune Permit BFD P21-0344 as being consistent with the Coastal Management Plan. I make that motion. Nick. I did not see that second again, I'm sorry. I'll second next motion. Okay, so we've got a motion from Nick Lorette and a second from Chad Shemitis. Um, so we'll start with Garrett Kipke. Yes. And Craig Scott. Yes. Okay, Ashley Robertson. Yes. Kyle Burgess. Yes. Mike Dayon. Yes. 
Uh, Nick Lorette? Yes. And Chad Schmidis? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Very good. Item 4.7, discuss and take action to confirm that the application for Beachfront Construction Certificate BCC 21-0397 submitted by Nueces County as part of the No Dune Protection Permit Determination previously issued by Nueces County Beach Management Advisory Committee is consistent with the City of Port Aransas Coastal Management Plan. Applicant seeks to construct an observation deck on the existing pier. Applicant Nueces County, property location 230 North on the Beach, AKA a Horace Caldwell Pier. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So nothing like uh, something completely out of the ordinary to, uh, uh, for all the new commissioners to, to, to look at. So as the background information explains, I think reasonably well, the, uh, and, and for those that, that just may need a reminder, the property essentially from the just, a little bit south of the pier, Horse Caldwell Pier, all the way to the jetties is actually county, Nueces County owned property. And it's controlled by the Nueces County Coastal Parks. Uh, we have some interlocal agreements to maintain it uh, and some other things. But all the dune permitting for any uh, county owned uh, property is handled by the, uh, the, the Beach uh, Management Advisory Committee, BMAC of the county. They're responsible for dune permitting. But the coastal management plan for property that's within our city limits still requires that we issue the beachfront construction certificate. So I don't recall that in, in Nicole's in my tenure, eight plus years, that we've had a situation where there's been a dune permit that the county's done that's needed a beachfront construction certificate from us. Uh, well, I take that back. There was the the rebuild of the building that's going on will require the same. But this is actually, I think, the first one that that uh, will have that we would have had to put together and bring to planning and zoning. So it was, it's a little odd, and it's it's very rarely seen. And I, I don't know once they finish the building there that that I can recall that there'll be an instance for another one. So what you see is a dune permit that you did not approve, did not, uh, you know, never had the ability to see nor comment on, yet the beachfront construction certificate, uh, which is, is required in the coastal management plan for them to proceed with construction, it has to be a part of it. Uh, in this case, it's not a, what I will say, in, in my opinion, as, a, as your staff lays on, it's not a, not a big deal. It's an observation deck on, on a pier that I'm sure you're all familiar with, but it's within that thousand foot. It's seaward of the erosion, uh, seaward of the erosion line. Um, so that's what you have. We went ahead and provided the, the information that uh, uh, in addition to the GLO's approval of the, of, of the, the no dune determination, they call it for the permit that's associated with this. Um, so again, this is just the beachfront construction certificate, which uh, for our dune permitting, for our dune permitting goes hand in hand with our own dune permit that you will have been part of approving. So I, I don't know if that rambling dissertation helps, but that, that's what you have before you. Um, it is consistent, uh, what they're doing is consistent with what we would allow. And so we, we, didn't, we don't have any issue with this. We didn't have any issue with presenting the beachfront construction certificate. It is consistent with our coastal management plan. Uh, it is referenced, it is, it is a requirement based on the interlocal agreement. So um, there really, we didn't feel that given the nature of this, that uh, as, as we mentioned earlier with no dune permit type um, uh, applications, that there was any need to send it to a reviewing engineer um, and, and thus we didn't. So that's what you have before you. And I'll try to answer any questions, although it's like I said, it's pretty straightforward, I think. <laughs> I think the short version of that is uh, we always do beachfront construction certificates as part of our dune permit. Since this is not a dune permit that we did, the county can't do a beachfront construction certificate. They did the dune permit part, we're doing the beachfront construction certificate part. And the good news is they've already started. That's what I was going to ask. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Construction will create. And so the general land office is very anxious for us to do our part in. Uh, in <laughs> connect all the dots so that everybody is uh, 
everybody's legal again. Again, but not now, right? <laughs> right. Technically, technically, oh, no. Rick, stop it. I'm joking. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, with that, if, less, does anybody have a comment or a question? Um, effort to keep things moving forward. I will uh, motion for approval for Beachfront Construction Certificate BCC 21-0397. So moved. What'd you say, Nick? I said, so moved. I was just saying Nick so Nicole could hear me. Oh. Do, does anybody have a second to my motion to approve? Second. I'll second that. Everybody. That's a lot of motions and a lot of seconds. So Get her I'm just going to motion. I didn't understand what Chad was doing. <laughs> it's okay. It I'm going to call that a motion from Nick and a second from Kyle. There you so go. the first <laughs> two people I heard say that. Um, and we will start with Craig Scott. Yes. Okay. Ashley Robertson. Yes. Kyle Burgess? Yes. Nick Lorette? Yes. Garrett Kipke? Yes. Mike Dayon? Yes. And Chad Schmidus? Yes. Motion carries. And I will apologize. I've only been on this job for 25 or 30 minutes. So I'm just trying <laughs> to keep just kind of trying to keep the flow going so we can no problem. we don't have those awkward silences. Just let's let somebody get a motion out there. Doing great. Agenda item number five, Planning and Zoning Commission, comments and items for future consideration. Um, I have one little one. I've talked to a couple of you guys about it, including Nicole, uh, and it's good for everybody, I think, and I'll let Nicole kind of run with it or anybody else. Uh, the new commissioners, as you well know, and if you attempted to do your homework, even if you want to do homework, uh, codification and uh, Ordinances. Uh, it's not city of Port A specific. It's it's a lot of a lot of effort to find out what you're supposed to read and study to try to come up with the decision to recommend approval or not or have the right questions. And I, I, what I'm talking about is with staff when they create these agendas, there's some things that are going to have to be like Rick has to just take off and explain and that type of thing. But for doing your homework, let's say it's a parking ordinance or a, uh, uh, it's a parking question or it's a uh, density ordinance. I'm suggesting that if it's not too much effort in, these, uh, in this agenda, we highlight chapter 25, blah, 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 chapter 21, just to get not only the new people on board, it also tells us guys that have been here for a while or a long time in concert with what staff is suggesting. And then also now that we're farther along uh, over the last couple of years with our technology to where the, uh, the citizens can request this online, download it, and that would help them also be able to just take the journey through. Candidly, a lot of crazy crazy different areas to try to find the right answer, but I'm just inviting staff and anybody that has a suggestion to, uh, uh, we've got the perfect agenda, we've got the agenda set up. Why don't we kind of reference our, our chapter and uh, uh, item number, et cetera, to help everybody, including the uh, public that's doing their homework, uh, speed up the process, be more efficient with it. Not a motion, just a comment. That's a good idea. And, and, and we'll also, like I said, we'll also uh, try to provide some links to things like our coastal management plan to make it easier to find. Uh, again, Nick, you pointed out two chapters that, that are probably, uh, I think what I would spend my, my initial time, if, if you only had a little bit of time to spend, uh, start with chapter 25, uh, with the zoning, chapter 21, uh, you know, the, the subdivision or, uh, chapter, those are probably really good ones. Our, our ordinances are pretty, pretty easily searchable. If you haven't been there, most, I think most of you probably have online, but we'll also try to provide some links and some other good cheat sheets that it'll get you to those areas really quickly. And, and again, I can't emphasize enough, stop in anytime, um, 
you know, like I said, we're, we're, we're here to ensure your success. Like I said, there was a lot of people that applied for, for those four jobs and you guys got them. So congratulations. I mean, that's a, that's a credit to the resume and, and uh, I think your visit with the council members and, and their confidence in you. So like I said, we want to do everything we can to, you know, to, to, to help you guys uh, be the best you can. And we'll look for things that we can, you know, try to do to help you. I've got one thing I'd like to add here and it's taken one out of the, a little bit out of Frank Morgan's book. And, and we, I don't know if we actually need to put it on as an agenda item for a future meeting, but I think for all of us, I'd like to have a better understanding of who, who and how we do follow up to make sure that these dune permits are following the prescribed mitigation in the dune permit themselves. It may be something that's happening in your office that, and when I say your office, it'd be Rick and Nicole's office, that we just, we never see the other end of it, but it would, it would be something with, without carrying us into a long discussion tonight, but it would be something I would be curious about going forward. I have a job where I have to mitigate 266 cubic feet. So I've got 10 yards I've got to mitigate. When I finish that project, I, who follows up to say, hey, that actually got done, it was done properly, the end. And, no, and, I, I, I think, I think that's a, it's a great idea. idea. Wow. Yeah, we started down that uh, that path, Chad, and and uh, you know, somewhere along the way, it kind of got off the track. So I think uh, Nicole, just make a note. Let's put it on as a discussion item. I don't know that there's any action necessarily, but uh, maybe uh, and, and maybe we just do it in, in, in workshop fashion for you know, like I said, a, a, just allow thirty minutes uh, or something to, to have a discussion. Because yeah, we we can kind of tell you where where we've gotten where we stalled and, and uh, obviously with some new folks, we'd love to hear some other ideas and opinions too, because it is a challenge, Chad, you're right. Sure, and I mean, I don't, I don't think it's a, a burden. I mean, this, it's not the right time because if we're gonna, if we're gonna put it on for future discussion, we need to follow yeah, the rules. We'll, 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 we'll do, do it, we'll do it next time when it, so it's out there and available. Good idea. All right, with that, does anybody have any follow-ups, questions, comments? I'd like to thank the new members. Thank you very much for being here. Absolutely. Yes. Yep. All right. Thank you for stepping up. What, what's the exact word I use instead of, I, I have a real, I, I'm really bad about even saying goodbye on phone calls. So what's the proper way for us to, for me to adjourn this meeting? You said it, adjourn the meeting. Me meeting? Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Everybody have a great evening. Thank you, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.